new and used car pricing and a market update. New cars are finally back in stock, but it could be a little too late. With inflation through the roof and household budgets being pinched, Americans might not be able to afford them any longer. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, the homework guy, here today with the amazing Elizabeth, the homework gal. New cars are slowly becoming more widely available as supply chain bottlenecks are finally starting to ease, but now an increasing number of Americans might not be able to afford them. With the Federal Reserve aggressively hiking interest rates to fight inflation, consumers are finding that the cost of financing a new car is suddenly a lot higher than it was even earlier this year. That's expected to cut demand and add new pressure to the auto industry, which had been struggling with depleted inventories during the pandemic. Cox Automotive Chief Economist Jonathan Smoke wrote in a blog post recently, the irony for the auto market is that as the industry is poised to start seeing volumes increase from supply constrained recession like low levels, the rapid movement in interest rates is reducing demand. I would add that record high car prices aren't helping demand very much either. At the end of the third quarter, Cox Automotive found the new vehicle loan rate was 7%, up two percentage points for the year. The loan rate for the used car market was up the same amount to 11% according to Cox Automotive. 11% for a used car loan? Yeah. That's nuts. As I mentioned earlier, the higher cost for car financing comes as household budgets are already being squeezed by record high inflation. That means while new car inventory may be growing, many Americans are finding themselves no longer able to afford the new cars that are arriving on dealer lots. Unfortunately, the cost of financing is expected to keep climbing. Already this year, the Fed has aggressively increased loan interest rates by three to three and a quarter percent. And the bad news is it has indicated it plans to continue hiking rates into 2023. Automakers could offset costs with financing deals and discounts, but after car buyers showed manufacturers they were willing to pay outrageously high prices for new cars, manufacturers have vowed not to return to discounting and finance deals amid record profits. Just a short time ago, we published a video titled Car Industry Never Going Back, and this is exactly what we were talking about. There's a reason we told you to sit out of the car market. Prices were high, and we saw this day coming. As inventory is recovering, a historically significant red flag has popped up. Fleet and commercial sales notably increased in the third quarter, indicating that demand from consumers may be fading. That's a concern for car dealers because retail sales to consumers are much more profitable than fleet and commercial sales. And automakers have been counting on pent-up demand from the pandemic to persist in the near term. But Kristen DeCheck, Automotive Policy Advisor for the Federal Reserve Bank of Chicago's Detroit branch, said fleet sales aren't necessarily as bad of a sign as they had been in the past. There's a lot of pent up fleet demand currently because fleets have been starved in favor of consumers, she said, adding that many government and large commercial fleets are paying sticker price for battery electric and hybrid vehicles to meet local emission standards. The increase in fleet orders comes as inventory levels are finally rising from record lows. The total automotive inventory increased to about 1.43 million units at the end of September, the highest level since May 2021, and up 160,000 units from the end of August, according to the Bank of America Securities. Analyst John Murphy wrote to investors, We continue to believe that the sales weakness over the past year is a function of limited inventory, but he also noted that demand could soften based on inflation, weak consumer confidence, and the concerns about a recession. Largely due to the Fed's actions, Cox recently lowered its new vehicle sales forecast for the year to 13.7 million, down from an already lowered 14.4 million, and a level not seen in a decade. At that sales pace, Smoke said lower production and profits could further stress the supply chain, which may lead to bankruptcies and further inventory disruptions. Not good news. <laughs> bankruptcies for dealers, though. That's okay news with me. <laughs> In the meantime, however, price increases for new vehicle prices have been slowing. J.D. Power estimates that average vehicle prices for new cars rose 6.3% in September to a record of more than $45,000. Earlier in the year, prices had surged at record levels of 17.5% and 14.5%. Well, sadly, prices do keep climbing. To make up for lower sales, automakers shifted to producing their most expensive vehicles, which are also their most profitable. That, combined with rising interest rates, is pushing more car shoppers to look at used vehicles. Edmonds reports the average amount financed for new vehicles hit a record of 41347 
during the third quarter. That's up from 40,602 during the second quarter and 38,315 a year earlier. The average monthly payment on a new vehicle stayed above $700 during the third quarter. Of those buyers, more than 14% committed to a monthly payment of $1,000 a month or more for new vehicles. Just insanity, the highest level that Edmonds has ever recorded. Jessica Caldwell, Executive Director of Insights at Edmonds said, inventory can be a bit tenuous, but it feels like maybe it's going to get better and not necessarily worse, which comes at an interesting time because now it feels like there may actually be a bit of trouble on the demand because of high prices, higher interest rates, and the questions of whether we're in a recession or not. Let me help you out, Jessica. We're in a recession. We're in a recession. Cox Automotive Economist Charlie Chesbro said, he doesn't expect new vehicle prices to ease anytime soon, if ever, as automakers vow to keep leaner inventories to boost profits. He stated, I don't know that there is any return to normal. I think we are just at a new normal. Yeah. Pricing in the used vehicle industry has been declining, but the interest rate increases could offset that depending on the terms. That's why buying in cash is a great idea. <laughs> After peaking in January, Cox Automotive's Mannheim Used Vehicle Value Index, which tracks prices of used vehicles sold at U.S. wholesale auctions, has fallen about 13% this year through September. And last month, wholesale values had their first year-over-year -year drop since May 2020, Cox said on Friday. But prices remain elevated from historic levels. The average price of a financed vehicle is over $31,000, a level closer to new vehicle prices than used cars and trucks, according to Edmonds. There just aren't a lot of good options, Caldwell said. Used doesn't present itself as a good option, really, unless you can find something with a lower interest rate. I shared this earlier this week, but it bears repeating. At the end of this month, after just two months following pre-launch, MPG Extreme, the company producing X-Caps we've been promoting, is opening 30 new countries. The X-Caps are producing great success stories all across America, saving people money on their fuel expenses. Something that's always been true. Success leaves clues, and the fact that MPG Extreme is already going global, opening 30 new countries, gives you a major clue that the product works. How can you save money using X-Caps? If your vehicle burns premium gas, you can downgrade to regular 87 octane just by combining it with an X cap. It boosts the octane that much, and it's a much cheaper option than buying premium fuel. For other vehicles, gas or diesel, it saves you money by boosting your fuel economy. Soon enough, your friends and neighbors will be using X caps to save on fuel costs, and you might find yourself thinking, wow, I heard about it first on the Homework Guy channel. Yeah. Don't wait another minute. Click the link appearing on the screen or in the description box down below. If you guys have questions about the X-CAP and how it can boost your fuel economy, or maybe you're wondering if your vehicle is a good candidate for the X-CAP, email us and ask your questions, Kevin the Homework Guy at gmail.com, or call text to 701-441-3399. We have a big customer database. We know how it works best, and we promise you a straight up honest answer. Helping the average vehicle owner is what we've been doing for 13 straight years. All right, if you're new here at the Homework Guy channel, don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell. We welcome you to our family. And of course, please share our videos on social media. Thanks everyone for coming back. And to all of our faithful followers, you guys rock. I'm Kevin Hunter, the Homework Guy, signing off with the amazing Elizabeth, the Homework Gal. We, we gotta, gotta go. go.